All right, let's begin last reflection. Here we go. Yeah, so that wasn't really that important, but just to make sure, because um, it was kind of not that loud on the video, I was just basically saying we're going to start in measure two because I didn't feel like starting in measure one would be helpful for us because that's just a whole other learning curve that I don't have time to teach. So I think that was a good decision teaching-wise to start in measure two. Um, although it, um, I should have made sure to say that we were starting in measure two and not have to wait until a student asks me where we're starting. So that is definitely something to think about for next time. Always make sure your students know where they're starting. Yeah, so I really want to say quickly, um, this is a new tempo that I've chosen on purpose. It's a little bit slower, and I could I can tell listening back that the um, students were kind of caught off guard a little bit because I had been doing a faster tempo, but I think that I stuck to my guns really well. In fact, I kind of want to look at it again for the sake of this video, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, so everyone is base is following my gesture. I'm making great eye contact um, with everyone in the ensemble, and I think that we're kind of one cohesive group, um, which is really nice to see. I think that the percussion is uh, rushing still, keeping the same old tempo, but um, other than that, I think that it is, it is good. I could have, I probably should have, um, talked to Laura and, you know, said, okay, you're rushing a little bit, Watch, make sure you're watching me in my gesture. Yeah, so I can already tell that my face is a lot more engaged because um, that is something I, in my reflection of my last video, that's something I really wanted to see more of, more facial engagement um, that's going to help the students feel more involved in the music. So I'm really happy to see that change. Yeah, so that difference of articulation shown with the staccato just keeps getting better and better with the practice of conducting. And that um, the cue that I'm giving them, the eye contact with the left hand, um, for the long tone after the staccato is really just um, really exciting to see um, the improvement on that. So, good. Yes, so this was a good instruction. I told them who, what, and where. But I could have done it in a much more succinct way. Can I have, um, let's see, I could have said, could I have tuba, horn, trombone, measure two through five, singing on ta? And that would have been much better. So think about that for next time. So this was a great modeling opportunity for me, number one, because I am a vocalist, so I, you know, I should be utilizing the major instrument that I've been studying. So that's great, and I explained why, why I'm modeling, why I want them to sing it, even though they're playing instruments right now. I'm looking for clarity of tone, and I'm looking for placement of breath. Very clear, very concise, and I think I, I like to be transparent with my students, because, you know, otherwise, it's like, well, why are you teaching me this? So, very good to see. Good modeling. So 
let's apply that to your instrument right a little bit earlier so that we are not allowed coverage of the music. Let's that. Yeah, so then we apply the singing into the instrument, um, which is a great next step. And also, in addition to applying that, I'm I'm asking them specifically to then think about where they had to breathe for the singing, um, which was earlier, and apply that to the instrument so that they're not late. And then specifically saying that I think is very helpful. So being transparent with instruction and feedback is really good. Good to see. Wow, so I could really notice a difference in their sound. It, the clarity, the, the tone was so much more clear, and um, overall, the rhythmic accuracy was just um, so much better. So that's really exciting to see. Yeah, okay, so then I took it one step further and then applied it to the whole ensemble sound, which, um, you know, it's always good to put things back into context after you work with it in isolation. So that was a really nice um, next step in this um, clarity of tone and rhythmic accuracy section. Um, I think that I could have given the winds a better gesture at the beginning to make sure that they were on task with me, because they seemed a little bit caught off guard when I hit the downbeat. Um, so that's definitely something to think about. When you're adding sections back in, make sure that they're up and they're ready and they're paying attention in playing position. Something to think about. Now, really quickly, let's uh, play measures 2 through 10, and I want to be able to hear the winds. So that's our sound. I want to be able to hear the wind from this. Okay. So this is a great next step because I'm moving on to balance, but I wish I could have been a little more transparent and a little bit more student-based. Instead of saying, I want to be able to hear the flutes, I wish I said, I want you to be able to hear the flutes. I want your playing to feed into the flute sound. Something like that would, I think would have um, been a lot more meaningful to the students, but let's see what that sounded like. Wow, okay, so they, I mean, you know, they're all great musicians, so I guess I'm not that surprised, but, you know, you could really hear the flutes. It's, it's kind of amazing. Um, I think, though, because of the wording of the instruction I gave, like the tr instruments like the trumpet and the clarinet, I think we're kind of having a muffled sound because they're trying to be quiet, When if I, whereas if I asked them to play into the flute sound, I think it would have been a more supported, softer dynamic. Um, and I think that's that's very important to notice, is that your instruction, a lot of students are going to take that literally. So, okay, I want to be able to, I want him to be able to hear the flute, so I gotta, I gotta be really quiet, I gotta close up my oral cavity. Where if, whereas if I said, play into the flute sound, inherent in that instruction is still that stream of breath energy, um, yeah, so I think that's just really important. Differ differentiation of instruction. Yeah, overall, I think it was really effective teaching, especially with the clarity of tone and the placement of breath in the lower brass. That was uh, very efficient, coupled with the vocal modeling. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, and there are some things to work on. There are some cue things with the conducting to work on, making sure everyone is with me at the beginning of um, a section. And also um, asking students to play into another instrument sound instead of asking, asking them to allow me to hear one instrument over another, making the instruction student-based. 
um, is something for me to work on. Overall, very good.